This question is about sodium halides. State what is observed when silver nitrate solution is added to sodium fluoride solution. Well, acidified silver nitrate solution is the test for the presence of halide ions and we get precipitates formed. Silver chloride is a white precipitate, silver bromide is a cream precipitate, silver iodide is a yellow precipitate. However, silver fluoride is totally soluble and so that means that we will still have a solution at the end and that solution will be colourless. So we can say colourless solution or no visible change. State one observation when solid sodium chloride reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid. This is a reaction that proves the reducing ability of the halide ions and we can get various sulfur containing products formed. However, sodium chloride, specifically chloride, doesn't do very much. Chloride is not a very good reducing agent because it is a very small ion. And we've been asked to give an equation for the reaction that occurs and state the role of the chloride ions in this reaction. So in this reaction, the chloride ion simply acts as a base or a proton acceptor and the sulfuric acid simply is acting as an acid and giving those protons, those hydrogen ions, to the chloride. And what we end up making is hydrogen chloride gas and either sodium hydrogen sulfate or sodium sulfate. And this means that we've got two possible equations that could form. The first equation is the one that I prefer because it is more simple, and that's where you have one of everything, making the sodium hydrogen sulfate and hydrogen chloride. And if you want to make the sodium sulfate, we need two of those sodium chlorides, and we need to produce two of those HCl. Now, hydrogen chloride is a gas and it is formed in the appearance of misty or steamy or white fumes that get produced. So that would be our observation. One mark for the observation, the equation and the role. Give an equation for the redox reaction between sodium bromide and concentrated sulfuric acid. Explain using oxidation states why this is a redox reaction. Well, as I've already mentioned, bromide is a better reducing agent than chloride ions, and so that is how redox is able to occur. The bromide gives away electrons to the sulfur in the sulfate. Now, the equation is actually something that is quite tough to simply just remember, I think. Some people like to do that. I prefer to remember half equations and then to combine them. So the bromide ion in the sodium bromide converts into bromine and we would see this as orange fumes and that means it needs to lose electrons so the balanced half equation has got two electrons on the right hand side and then the sulfuric acid is going to turn into sulfur dioxide and so that's all that you need to remember and then you need to be able to balance this half equation from there and so we've got two oxygens too few on the right hand side so we need to add two water molecules to the right hand side and that means that we've got four hydrogen on the right but only two on the left so we need to add two hydrogen ions to the left hand side to make this balanced and also two electrons so when we combine those two half equations the overall equation is 2Br- plus 2H plus plus H2SO4 turns into SO2 plus Br2 plus 2H2O now, if you prefer, you can combine this equation with the equation from part B. And what I mean by that is we would end up making not just sulfur dioxide, but also sodium sulfate. And so to do that, clearly what we need to have is we need to have more sodium bromide than previously. So we'd need to have two sodium bromide and two sulfuric acid, and we'd end up making sodium sulfate, bromine, sulfur dioxide, and two water but I definitely prefer the first one that I did. You could even break apart that sulfuric acid even further and end up with four hydrogen ions in the equation instead of H2SO4 and 2H+, but this is absolutely the same overall equation. And you could have the ionic equation form of the um, sodium bromide equation as well, and that would look like this. 
Now, in terms of proving why this is redox, we actually get two marks here. So we need to focus on each of the chemicals that is being reduced and oxidized. So bromine is changing from minus one in the bromide to zero in the bromine. And so that means it's lost electrons and so is oxidized. And you can tell that from the half equation as well, because the electrons are on the right hand side, which means it is ox. And when the electrons are on the left, that means it is red. And that's a helpful tip for how we can use redox or redox. Red is on the left and ox is on the right. And that's where you find the electrons in the corresponding half equations. And so if we look at the sulfuric acid half equation in H2SO4, we've got four oxygens at minus two each. We've got two hydrogens at plus one each. And then this is being added to sulfur to give us neutral overall. So two plus sulfur minus eight equals zero, which means the sulfur must be plus six. Alternatively, you could have worked this out from simply the sulfate ion, where sulfur minus eight is equal to minus two. And then in the products in SO2, we've got two oxygen at minus two each, which means that sulfur must be plus four. So what we need to say to get us the mark is that sulfur has got an oxidation state change of plus six to plus four, so it is being reduced. And last of all, in part D, state what is observed when aqueous chlorine is added to sodium bromide solution. And so this is the displacement reaction equation where we're proving the oxidizing ability of the halogens and chlorine is a better oxidizing agent than bromine. And so that means that chlorine can displace bromide from sodium bromide solution. And so what we see happening is the formation of the bromine and the bromine is a yellow or an orange solution. We mustn't say brown. That color is reserved for when we form iodine in a reaction because iodine is definitely a brown solution. And the equation to prove that this is happening is chlorine is reacting with the bromide ions and that turns into chloride ions and bromine. And don't forget we need to have two of the halide ions because the halogen molecules contain two of the atoms. Now also note this said the ionic equation, so that means that we're not allowed to include sodium in our answer. Okay, that's the end of this question. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.